Last year, there were nearly 18,000 people waiting for social housing in Birmingham. The City Council says it'll build 2,000 new properties over the next five years. Meanwhile, hundreds of existing tenants are being relocated from soon-to-be-demolished tower blocks. All this week, we're hearing stories from stories. Ben Godfrey has been to Bromford, where the mass movement of tenants is steeped in history. In the shadow of the M6, school children are sprucing up their estate, taking pride in their surroundings. We're going to clean the, this whole waste dump to clean, make it a nice clean place. We're going to do painting. It's about so all uh, about uh, the helping people. There used to be four tower blocks on this wasteland near Bromford, but they were pulled down for safety reasons. They were sinking into waterlogged land. High-rise demolitions look pretty spectacular, but they frustrated many here who want a greater say over local development. You just wonder about all the plans and developments for the tower blocks kind of come down. You know, there is, there is a concern locally about what's going to happen, what's the future. The future isn't yet clear for the hundreds of people who'll leave these two high-rises before the demolition teams move in, but it's likely they'll leave an estate which is 50 years old this year. Displacement today is in some ways paralleling what happened in the 1950s and 60s when people were taken out of their communities and displaced into or dispersed around the city into a variety of different estates. Communities were sometimes deliberately broken up. Now the problem isn't you know, deliberate intent, it's simply not having enough resources to make sure a community can be rehoused together. The real work didn't begin until after the Second World War when the corporation took over vast areas of tunnel backs, ramshackle factories and dilapidated terraces to start the miracle of building a new city from the ruins of the old. Many families were moved to tower blocks from the so-called slums of Birmingham in the 1950s and 60s when living conditions deteriorated around the city centre. Three generations of Claire McLean's family lived here in Bromford in Holbrook Tower. My mum lived in Aston and she said she moved on Bromford in 67 and she said the flats were luxury. She said where she come from, they didn't have um, toilets inside or even a bath. She had to have a tin bath. So I said to her, Bromford, then the flats were luxury. She couldn't believe her luck when she first moved in. Uh, my son was born in the block of flats as well. So to me, it holds a lot of good memories. On this land, legendary jockey Lester Piggott once rode winners. Bromford Bridge Racecourse opened in 1894, even staging cross-country championships. In 1965, the horses bolted and the homes arrived. So, 50 years on and Bromford's landscape is changing once again. And now, as then, people are just as intent on preserving those memories of living here. Future local housing might look something like this. Neighbouring Castle Vale is seen by some as the model to follow. And the City Council has sought to reassure people that new generations of tenants will continue to live on the Bromford estate, with plans to replace these two tower blocks with modern family homes. Ben Godfrey, BBC Midlands Today, Birmingham. And on tomorrow's programme, we'll meet some of the young people in Bromford who are succeeding in finding work in one of the UK's worst areas for youth unemployment. Litchfield